welcome to Cafe Astro Athens. Over this cup of Copper Moon coffee today, I am going to discuss the moon still being alive. Cheers. Now much like the activity of mixing my milk in my coffee, the moon also has a lot of activity. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter found 500 patches of exposed bedrock on the surface of the moon. Now what this means is that something had to have caused that bedrock to be exposed. Because, well, the moon is covered in a lot of lunar dust known as regolith. Now regolith is an inorganic material, which means it cannot support life, and it covers most of the bedrock on the surface of the moon. It's this very unconsolidated dusty material that usually accumulates quite quickly. So if this is left over from years ago with the moon's activity, it for sure would have been covered by this lunar dust by now. This must mean that there's some recent geological activity that's going on. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter was able to measure temperature differences on the surface of the moon by using its diviner instrument, which is able to pick up various temperatures and in areas where there's exposed bedrock, it's found to be a lot hotter than areas where the bedrock is covered in this regolith. Now these 500 patches of exposed bedrock that the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter detected are actually narrow ridges across the moon's surface near the Lunar Maria, which is the dark patches that we see on the moon. The Maria actually is Latin for the seas. Now astronomers once thought that they were actually seas, but they likely formed from ancient volcanic eruptions. Because when the moon formed, which was about 4.5 billion years ago, was right around the time that the terrestrial planets formed in our solar system. And when they formed, they were extremely, extremely hot. And when they cooled down, that's when they started to contract because their cores were still very hot, but their surfaces were relatively cool which allowed for them to contract and the crust started to crackle. However, with the moon, a lot of evidence points to the possibility that it had magma oceans covering its entire surface at one point. This is what led into what we see, like in this image, which are known as lobate scarps. This likely resulted from the moon's contraction. And then we have Grobin showing the moon's expanding, being pulled apart. So we see that the moon is contracting in some regions, but expanding in others. And so that's, that's kind of like my waffle here. So you can see that there are crevices and there are areas that are raised. So the Lebate scarps would be as a result of the contraction, which would be where the waffle is raised. And then where you see the crevices, that would be the grabbin. That is from the expansion of the moon. And so we see that in fact, the moon is still geologically alive. But this is likely formed through the shifting of tectonic plates. And actually there are still seismometers on the surface of the moon from during the Apollo missions that it was installed in the 60s and 70s and to this day we still pick up lunar quakes which is like earthquakes on the moon and so we're seeing that the moon is still moving it's shifting and we want to figure out why now this is one of my favorite images taken from this study where you see in red that actually are the crevices that were picked up those narrow ridges and they line up perfectly with the ancient cracks in the moon's crust when magma once flowed and this was actually detected in 2014 by NASA's GRAIL mission. One more incredible feature here on the moon is Oceanus Procellarum which in Latin means ocean of storms and scientists believe that this is where lava once flowed rather than it being created by an impact. There are still so many mysteries about our neighboring satellite. So many questions. Are we seeing tectonic activity on the moon today that was caused by major impacts billions of years ago? Is the moon still evolving? Is it still growing? What's causing it to shift so much? Are the impacts that it experienced millions and billions of years ago still affecting it today? This brings me to a quote by the head researcher of the study, Peter Schultz. Giant impacts have long lasting effects. The moon has a long memory. What we're seeing on the surface today is testimony to its long memory and secrets it still holds. So on that note, today, the 4th of July, there is a lunar eclipse and a full moon. 
I hope that each and every one of you look up at the night sky and when you see our neighbor, you say hello and wonder what other secrets is it holding. Until next time, cheers. Be sure to always reach for the moon.